welcome to the St. Francis 50. St. Francis make luxury catamarans built in South Africa and these things will take you around the world. Let's go and see what we think of this one. So let's start this review of the St. Francis Cataran with a good look at the helm and here are Teresa's thoughts on the day. This is the helm position of the St. Francis and this is a real strength of this particular catamaran. Uh, you can see that I'm completely enclosed and protected and not only that but I have great visibility and great ventilation as well because I've got an opening hatch right in front of me just in case that's an issue. By the way, the uh, screens here are all glass, and so you've got the windscreen wiper, which is great in case of rain or fog or whatever. All my controls are here, of course, and my, there's one massive electric winch just next to me. There is another winch on the other side, but I can actually control both winches from here. So I don't need to go to the other side in order to control the winch, which I thought was kind of cool. Other than that, the helming seat is really comfortable and as I said, like there's nothing to complain about. Our priorities with the helming position is good visibility and good protection and this ticks both of those boxes, so I'm happy. As we move to look at safety on deck, the side decks of the St. Francis are wide and clear. The hatches are not flush, however, there are no other tripping hazards. Handrails are present throughout the boat and this would be a super safe place to maneuver and to move around if you had bad weather. In addition to this, there are molded steps from the deck up to the top of the bimini. So putting the sails away or doing work up there is not going to be a hazard. Overall, we found this to be a very, very safe space to work. I have absolutely no concerns about the deck area of the St. Francis 50. One thing I was not overly happy about was the life raft position. I really do not like life rafts that are not very, very easily accessible and this doesn't quite cut the mustard. So without flush mounted hatches and that life raft, we are give the St. Francis a nine out of 10. Now the steering mechanism for the St. Francis is in a stern locker and this is super robust. However, if you want the engine and the engine access, well, over to me and we're in one of the aft cabins. This is the aft cabin in the starboard hull. Now the reason I'm here, because Teresa normally does all the ventilation, <laughs> is this engine access. Hello. So engine access, this is, this is bloody fantastic. There is a lot of insulation here so I, I would question engine noise on the way but it looks really you know there's a lot of thick insulation here how much heat is transferred through this I wouldn't know but to be able to get engine access without being on the transom of a boat is phenomenal this boat apparently will come in two variations both shaft drive and and sail drive so super easy access to everything the floor of the bilge is flat and our, our, our host Rourke was very keen to point out that that means that you haven't got like this huge bilge which will kind of spill oil all over the place. It's a really nice working space uh, and everything as I said super easy access lots of space around so maintenance uh, and repair would not be difficult here. An assessment of the standing rigging and spars on the St. Francis show a well built boat. There is a robust gooseneck and the St. Francis also benefits from the same lift system that is present on the Neisner, an extendable beam that allows a hammock or a dinghy or an outboard to be lifted easily. Looking at the lockers and the catches and the exterior of the boat, these were all super sturdy. Moving inside, the cabinetry is fantastic, but look at this. The handrails of this boat are everywhere. This is going to be a super safe place to go. We found handrails where we've never seen handrails before. I was very, very impressed with this. In a seaway, this is going to be a fantastic and secure boat to be on. Looking to cabinetry, it was all very, very well made. What we would say about all these South African builders, their cabinetry and woodwork is some of the best we have seen. It far outstrips the cabinetry that we've seen on most of the European market. Galley work surfaces are clean and well made in Corian with routed draining areas and fiddles to stop spillages. We were very, very happy with this. In addition to this, the owners have obviously specified top of the range appliances throughout. Moving to the saloon, everything from the cabinetry to the upholstery was absolutely immaculate. This is a very, very well made boat. Absolutely nothing I can fault here. We are happy to award the St. Francis a 10 out of 10 for build. Congratulations, St. Francis. 
And now 15 seconds of shameless showboating while we ask you to consider subscribing to our channel. We've done lots of Catalan reviews and we have lots coming up. So if you want to see all the reviews, if you want to be able to compare these reviews and finally see our top 10 of the best Catarans on the market, feel free to subscribe. There is a little click button down there. If you click that, you will never miss an episode. All right, thanks very much. On with the next criteria. This category takes a look at interior design and overall livability of this boat and we'll start as always in the cockpit. This is the cockpit of the St. Francis 50 and this is a fantastic cockpit. We've got, it's really enclosed space and it feels very, very secure and very well protected, but also it's spacious enough to be comfortable and also to host all of your friends that you might have on board. So this particular area, we've got a nice square U-shaped uh, seating area as well as a dining table. And then we've got an L-shape on the other side. And what I really like about this kind of setup is that it's very flexible. So I don't know about you, but when I am at anchor or underway, I kind of like to spread out and just like kick back and relax. And this kind of shaped cockpit is really useful for that. So if I can rearrange the cushions quickly, you know, I can just kind of sit back like this and it's super comfortable. And that is something that is really important to Nick and I, a comfortable, practical and well laid out cockpit. So I'm very happy with this. One thing I didn't mention on the day, although I do think is worth pointing out, is that the visibility forward from the cockpit is actually pretty good. So if you were to leave the helm position while underway, you could still keep an eye on everything going around you. Let's now take a look at the interior of this St. Francis 50. We have a large nav station looking forward, which Nick and I really like. We also have a U-shaped settee, which again, I really like. I think that is the perfect shape for when you're living on board. It allows you to lounge, but also to sit upright at the dining room table if need be. One thing that I would like to see improved upon is ventilation. There are two large opening hatches in the ceiling, but only one small opening hatch looking forward. As I've said in previous reviews, it's those forward facing opening hatches that really capture all that breeze while you're at anchor and cool the area down. So that is something that I would like to see. Well, this finds us in the saloon of the uh, St. Francis 50. They've very kindly given us coffee. And what I would say is that of all the catamarans we have seen, this feels the most homely. This really does feel like home. Um, they've got the big screen TV, the woodwork is actually really lovely quality. It's actually, the edging on this is, it's, it's, it's bent ply and it, I don't often see this, but it's really nice. It seems solid and there's a lot of nods here to what we used to see as monohull sailors, uh, gutters and, and fiddles um, to stop things rolling around. So I really like it. The, there's little, clever little features um, that we don't see on many cats, um, handholds. Handholds around a helm station, really useful. These bent round, um, you know, handholds going down into the into the into the hulls. And looking at this, I would say it's like a helm station, but it's it, it, as a chart table, it's more. It, it, the controls here are pretty extensive. So you've got your switch panels here, which is actually not that common in catamarans. Um, so you've got your switch panels. You've obviously got the, the facility for your your chart plotters, your water makers. So everything is is controlled from here. And um, on watch, because this is what we do, uh, on watch, I probably would like to see this a little bit higher. I, I'm, I'm a bit of a, sh you know. Yeah, I'm, that's short. I'm five foot nine. Um, this, I would like to have this probably about six inches higher, but I think there is such a customizable, customizable level to these boats. It's not a problem, and Rourke, the owner, is taller than me, so I'd like to get a little bit taller to, so I could see over, um, but it's a really nice place. Gary wise uh, so galley wise there's a lot of storage so there's double double fridge freezer here there's free there's a big chest freezer down in one of the holes uh, four burner hob really good communication with the cockpit and these kind of u-shaped galleys they are super good in a seaway you know do not underestimate how difficult it is to it is to kind of even prepare hot food uh, when you're underway and when you're in a seaway so I like the kind of this 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 feel the, the, the stove top is away from the away from the stairs into the hulls, which is a feature that I do not like on on some catamarans. So yeah, it's pretty nice in here. It's pretty well set up, and I would feel pretty safe uh, sailing this across oceans. 
Let's now take a look at the guest hall and hear what I had to say on the day. Here I am in the guest cabin of the St. Francis and this is a brilliant place to be putting your guests when they come to stay. Once again, not an island berth. I think in the 50 foot cut, I really want an island berth. I mean, that's one little thing that just makes a difference to your everyday life. It's so inconvenient not having an island berth. And anyone who has ever tried to make up a bed in a boat berth knows exactly what I'm talking about. So I think an island berth is probably, I was saying a 50 foot catamaran, particularly one of this ilk, necessary. But anyway, I'm not gonna bang on too much about that. Good things I really like about this cabin is so much storage. This is something that this boat does so well. There's a huge amount of storage space and it's really uh, practical storage as well. So it's not just loads of underfloor storage, it's plenty of like different options. So they've got these little um, opening cupboard things right there um, that goes along the entire length. And then you've got, you know, cupboards up above and you've got cupboards over here behind me, you've got cupboards everywhere. And I really like it, I like it a lot. Also, there is a little single bed right there. So I don't know, maybe if you've got, you know, like a couple with a like, young child or something like that, then that would be the perfect place to put them. So maybe that wouldn't suit everyone, but that's a really nice little feature. It would suit a lot of people really well. Other little things, like they've just got this rail here and you know, like just little things like that. It makes such a difference when you're kind of thinking, well, where am I gonna put my damp towel? Or I don't know, where am I gonna put my, so wrong I'm not sure but just like little things like that it kind of shows that people have thought this out and that people have lived on this boat and then fed back to the manufacturer and said you know we really want this or we really want that and the manufacturer is listening and making adjustments to the boat so I like that a lot your guests have their own shower room as you can see this is the aft shower room here there's a separate shower stool, toilet, sink, and a little bit of storage. So everything that your guests might require in a shower room. If we walk forward, you can see, first of all, there is loads of storage in this boat. That is fantastic. Nick's already mentioned the quality of the woodwork and that is evident throughout. The forward guest cabin is a transverse bunk. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the qualities of this transverse bunk in the forward part of the hull when we discuss the master cabin. So I'll leave those musings until then. The shower room for your guests who are using this cabin is forward and it is very spacious and very light with good ventilation. Let's see what's in here. Loads of storage and once again you've got these um, <laughs> handles which I find like mildly hilarious because yeah at the point where you need like to grab onto these to get into your berth then yeah things are probably fairly miserable for you but anyway because you've got steps you can you can step up into the berth anyway I'll stop carrying on about that there are little shelves next to um, on either side of the berth and so there's somewhere for you to like put your phone or put your kindle or whatever at night that is really i mean i'm sure you guys do exactly the same thing you're in bed but you've got your phone next to you and you're reading your kindle and maybe you've got like i don't know i sleep with earplugs in so you've got your earplugs and just somewhere to put those things really handy and thoughtful and then there's also usb chargers at the lamps so you can just easily charge your phone overnight without having to kind of run an extension lead or whatever or get out of bed and come over here and find somewhere to charge your phone so little thoughtful features i really like it now let's take a look and see what the master cabin has to offer so follow me into the master cabin and this isn't taking up the entire hull. I do believe that's an option. I think the St. Francis is very customizable, but this particular boat, they have chosen to have the master cabin kind of just in this forward section of the hull. So we have a, a transverse berth, which, uh, you know, you might like that, you might not. Uh, Rog, the owner, seemed a little bit ambivalent about it. I actually don't mind the berth being uh, forward because it offers you better ventilation, I believe, than berths in the aft part of the hull because when you're at anchor all of the breeze is coming across the front part of the deck and it's coming straight into uh, the, the cabin via the opening hatches so I really like being kind of forward. We discovered this when we were on board with Nikki and Jason and we were sleeping in a forward berth exactly like this with the transverse bunk so I like that. Uh, not an island berth so making the bed ugh, it would be a pain. I can see just by looking at it that I do not want to be making this bed like ever so that would be a massive pain but you know 
nobody's perfect. So huge <laughs> separate shower like I mean who needs this much space for a shower um, as uh, the owner of Balance said yesterday you know if you are someone who likes to shower with your partner or significant other then you know these kind of showers they're the place to be so Nick Oh, I'm in there. I'm in there with this fucking rush. <laughs> Plenty of opportunity for multiple showering kind of situations. Um, yeah, otherwise, you know, a head, sink, uh, covers, mirror, I mean, you know, all the usual basic stuff. Fantastic storage in this boat. Just looking around, I can see probably, I don't even know, like 10 drawers, maybe eight cupboards. There is storage everywhere and probably lots of hidden storage that I haven't even seen yet because it's all like hidden away beneath the, um, the floors or under the beds or whatever. So brilliant boat and really well suited. As Nick said before, it, it, it seems like a home. It really does seem like a very, very well thought out floating home, but I do believe that the sailing characteristics aren't too shabby either. We'll get onto that later. So, so far I'm very impressed. I just realised, like, even a handle to get into bed. I mean, I don't know how often I'd need that, but that's like a really thoughtful feature. I mean, at the point where you need this to get into your bed. Once you've done half a lot of tequila, you're going to need that. <laughs> I might need this, like, tonight. But, um, yeah, just little things like that. Really, really thoughtful. I love it. So what are we going to award the St. Francis out of 10? I really like this boat overall. It's fantastic, customizable, and of very high quality. However, I'm gonna dock a couple of points. One for ventilation, could have been better, particularly in the saloon. And a second because you don't get those island berths and on a 50 foot catamaran that's not performance orientated, although the performance is good, I think that is a must. So eight out of 10. Category 4 sees us dancing through the statistics of the St. Francis 50. She is a 50 foot catamaran that is 15 meters, 25 centimeters in length. Beam we're looking at 26 foot or 8 meters and the draft is 4 foot 2. As we move on to the figures for displacement, this 50 foot catamaran weighs 12 and a half tons. With an 88 square meter main, a 53 square meter jib and up to 200 square meters of Jenica, this is a lot of sail area for a relatively light boat. Although the St. Francis does not benefit from dagger boards, she is light and she does have a lot of sail area. So for performance, we're going to award her a 6 out of 10. Now the final category sees us looking at value for money for the St. Francis 50. Bear in mind that these currency conversions and prices are accurate as of the 1st of November 2019 and do not take into account local taxes. Now the base price for the St. Francis 50 is 920,000 US dollars. That is 711,000 British pounds or 835,000 euros. Fully loaded, you are looking at about $1.2 million. That's 927,000 pounds or $1.1 million euros. In this case, when assessing value for money for the St. Francis 50, there is a lot of stiff competition in this bracket. From the exquisites to the discoveries to the niceness to the privileges, there is lots of choice. In this case, we are going to award 5 out of 10 for value for money. Well, that was the particularly beautiful St. Francis 50. I think we can all agree that was much like the Rugby World Cup, another win for South Africa. <laughs> um, not that I'm in any way bitter about that. Now, um, as we always do with these reviews of Catarans, we will start with the positives. And then if there are any negatives, we will deal with the negatives. So, Therese, positives about the St. Francis 50. The St. Francis is a very well-built, well laid out, excellent attention to detail uh, catamaran. Uh, I think that it is fantastic for liverboards. It's definitely set up for liverboards. Mm -hmm. It is. It has a couple of features that I really liked. I liked the layout of the cockpit. Mm -hmm. um, I really liked just the, the general, I mean the layout is nothing um, groundbreaking, but there's a reason why they do it the way they do it, and that's because it works. The homing position was great. I mean, there's really no complaints about this boat. I, I really liked it. No, um, I agree. It's, it does everything very well. It mm. is clearly a boat uh, designed by sailors for sailors. And we say this a lot. 
you know, you can, in the Venn diagram of catamarans, you know, there are catamarans designed for the cruising market and there are catamarans designed for sailors. And the overlap is actually not that great. This definitely falls into the, it was designed by sailors. I've seen handrails, there are handrails galore on this. Yeah. Literally, and it's, it's very, very well thought out. So everything that we saw on that boat, I'm like, that's clever, that's clever, that's clever. Um, you know, things like dedicated uh, locker for surfboards. Yeah. That's insane. And, you know, as a surfer, that would be something that, you know, I, I consider to be an amazing feature to have on a boat. Not for everyone. And if you're not a surfer, what do you do with a locker that big? But nonetheless. So positives, super well built. Mm. Um, super luxurious. Uh, the finish, the cabinetry, absolutely amazing. Like all of that boat, you go inside and you're like, wow, yeah. this really is you know, everything is put together so well. Yeah, the quality is obvious the moment you step yeah, on board. Absolutely, yeah. That's exactly what you get. You get a real feeling of quality. Mm. <clears throat> and as I've said about all these Catarana reviews that we have done now for the best part of six months, you buy the boat with your heart. You don't buy it with your head. You can look at all our criteria. You can, you know, take take your score for performance and your score for value for money and the look of it and the build. But what it comes down to eventually is do you buy this boat with your heart. You look mm -hmm. at it and go, yeah, this is this is the boat for me. This is the boat for the family. This is the boat for us. This is our dream. And yeah, so nothing really uh, to complain about with the St. Francis no. 50. So um, any negatives? Nothing major. No? I've just been nitp nitpicking. <clears throat> Not only... Sorry. <laughs> Pre continue. <laughs> The only thing that we have uh, discussed about the St. Francis is that when you are asking, I think it's about one point, depending on options, 1.3, 1.4 million US dollars, then you're kind of really straying into luxury uh, catamaran territory and there are quite a few other boats competing yeah. in that market. So for example, you are at that price point competing against the Discovery 50, the Privilege 5, 10 or whatever they're calling it at the moment um <clears throat> the exquisite uh the maverick not the maverick the majestic yep. uh so there are these luxury 50 foot catamarans uh, of around the same um price and you know the saint francis is is priced to compete with those other boats so I guess it just comes down to a personal choice. All those boats that I've just rattled off offer something quite different from each other. Yeah, they do. So it really just depends on where you, you know, where you, what you like, essentially, where, where your preferences lie. So that's my only feedback about, about the St. Francis that could be a positive or a negative is that there's a lot of competition for that price point. Yeah, agreed. I mean, one to one negative, life raft placement, there's a lock underneath the helm seat. I don't like that. Um, I'm sure that could be changed. It could be changed easily. It. I mean, I think all these lockers, you know, it is, it's a semi-custom build. So if you yeah. want certain lockers, you want your life raft at the stone, they'll do that for yeah. you. There's no problem with that. Agree with exactly what you're saying. Um, if you look at all the Catarans we reviewed, the kind of the closest Catarans price-wise are all, you know, in the 50 foot, 1.1 to 1 point. I think the most expensive is 1.4 million. Mm. <clears throat> and really, when you're spending, if you've got 1.2 to spend on a catamaran, you'll spend 1.3 if you need to. Mm. You know, you're not penny pinching at this point to buy the 50 foot cat to take you around the world. Yeah. And my only, it is it a negative? My only concern is exactly the same as you that in the market where there is privilege, there is exquisite, there is discovery, and St. Francis and uh, Cape Majestic. Uh, does this have enough competitive competitive advantage? for you to buy it mm. over everything else and that really is my only slight negative i just don't think it offers enough wow as a package for mm. me to say yeah we've got this is what we're gonna buy mm. and i think there's a if we had that budget if we had that budget which, <laughs> which we, we do not and the, the just thing, to clarify <clears throat> the big discussion that has now seems to have evolved with all our cataran reviews is to do with how much innovation do you want on a boat? How many new features do you want on a boat? As opposed to just the classic lines and classic looks and classic, mm. um, you know, build. And I think that people now do tend to want certain innovations. They do, they want certain things on a boat. And while this has 
everything. It, I, to me, it just if I had that much money, I probably wouldn't buy the book. Buy yeah, the I think if, if I if I had to look to a, a you know a, a, a luxury cruiser with that much money, I don't think I'd go there. I think that there are things I personal, I personally like better, and that but that's taste. It's my mm. taste in the aesthetic, yeah, not in the actual functionality yeah. and design of the boat. Yeah. So St Francis um, fifty, a beautiful boat. Um, as we have said about all these South African boutique builders, they are really putting the non the, sorry the European uh, builders to shame at the moment. They really are, and we look at this across the board across different price points. And it's not just South African. There's obviously Seawind that built out of Vietnam mm. um, as well. These. Yeah, the, the non-European builders are just, they offer so much more for your money. Yeah. And they, rather than the no, we can't mentality, there is definitely a yes, we can mentality. Yeah. You know, when you go to a certain manufacturer and you cannot even specify a double sink because they're built on a production line, it, 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 it's an absolute nonsense, an absolute nonsense. And so South African builders, I do think that over the next 10 years, you are going to find a huge, a huge growth in people buying South African yachts because any qualms you had about the build quality, we have seen nothing but quality coming out of South Africa. Yeah, and I think that just on that note, I mean, the South African builders are quite clearly um, offering something very different and they're offering it at a, in my opinion, a much more competitive price, which presumably is why many of them build in South Africa in the first place. And so... We, we really like uh, a lot of the South African builders. We think that they're offering fantastic boats. Um, all I would say, and St. Francis falls into this uh, category, is that several of them, St. Francis included, uh, used to offer a smaller version of their yeah. boat, <clears throat> and now they only offer the 50-foot version. And indeed, some of them are kind of pushing that and looking at more at 55, 60-foot. So... They're really, uh, there's a transition that's already taken place from uh, these boutique builders building boats for the average cruiser that, you know, that are obviously a little bit more um, accessible financially to more people. And now they are building bigger boats, more luxurious and a lot more expensive and the average person can't afford them. So if you don't have over a million dollars to spend, um, then you really are only able to look at production catamarans and a few others, which we have, you know, reviewed. The Sea Wind, for example, the Maverick is doing something different, mm -hmm. which I really applaud. Um, so there are exceptions to that. But yeah, if there's any feedback that I could give to St. Francis, and that they're not alone in this, but obviously this is what this video is about, um, then it would be, you know, think about building a boat for... Uh, the mid-40s? Yeah. I'd take the Pepsi challenge with any South African builder or any other builder that is looking at fifty foot, the 50-foot range. If you bring out a 45-foot boat, you are going to clean up because no one else is doing it apart from Maverick and Antares in the non-production. Yeah. And that is where people want. There is a definitive shift. We have the stats from uh, the, the World Cruising Club. We have statistics all over the internet to say that people, maybe through the YouTube thing, maybe are trying to get off earlier. They're not waiting until they're 60. They want to do it at 50, 55 with a slightly reduced budget. But, and, they, but they want catamarans. And they want cats. They don't want monoholes. So that was the St. Francis 50. And I hope that you enjoyed this review. If you agree with anything we're saying, if you disagree with anything we're saying, if you have any other comments whatsoever, please put them down below. And also don't forget to vote. We have now over 2,000 of you who have voted for our catamarans. And it is those votes that are more important because at the end of this series we are going to do a top 10 based purely on your vote not on ours so we are removing our bias because inevitably we are biased even though we're trying not to be and we are basing the final results on the public vote so please don't forget to vote other than that we will see you next week with another catamaran review goodbye goodbye